the Roman soldiers, you can imagine their armor, right? Now, as they're walking, this belt has got all of these little jingly, jingly things on it, so it makes a noise. Right. So it made like a little jingle noise, so they had jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible says that Jesus is the way, the truth, but he's not just the truth. He is truth. truth. Oh, that's good. I like he that one. He is truth. about this program and I have no doubt that every one of you are going to be blessed. The Word of God is a powerful tool. In fact, every single believer should be completely skilled in the Word. Do you know why? Because that is how we live in the abundant life that Jesus won for us. That's how we become victorious. In fact, when we learn exactly how the Word of God works, we understand how to use it and appropriate it to our lives, it actually has the power to transform us from the inside out so we can become the overcomers that God intended us to be. Now, in this series of The Higher Life, I'm so excited about it because we're going to be dealing with the armor of God. Now, that is a very special subject indeed. And why I love it so much is because it's really going to teach us how we overcome in this world. It's a powerful, powerful spiritual armor that the Holy Spirit has given to us. But to bring out the richness of what the truth of God's word has to say about this armor and to put it in a way that we can actually understand it practically and apply it to our lives, I brought some friends along with me. Won't you help me welcome them to our set today? On my panel to help me today, I have some very special people and I'd like to introduce you to Tracy Treadray. Tracy is a very special friend of mine and she's also the founder of Real Women Real Life Television Program. Not only that, she has an outstanding international women's ministry. Won't you welcome Tracy? Also a very dear friend to me is Titi Goru and Titi is the founder of the women's ministry called Women of Vision. Won't you welcome Titi? Titi comes all the way from Vintook, Namibia. So what a privilege it is to have you with us. Thank you, Titi. We also have someone very special, and that is Linda Shooter. Now, Linda has a very special place in my heart because she is a writer just like me. Linda Shooter has, is the founder of Lady Rose Magazine and International Women's Ministry. Welcome, Linda. Also, in the house with us today, we have a very powerful woman of God by the name of Rihanna Thumbram. And Rihanna is really precious. She has such a powerful ministry. She comes from the Logos Bible Church in Centurion, Pretoria. Won't you welcome Rihanna? <laughs> On today's program, we're going to be speaking about the first part of the belt of truth. This is a vital piece of armor for our spiritual armor. And I'm so excited to see what the Word of God has to say about the belt of truth. Well, here we are ready to get straight into the Word of God discussing the armor of God and on show and display is the magnificent belt of truth. Now, before we even get into that, let's find out what the Word has to say concerning our armor and this belt. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, it says this, In conclusion, in other words, take note, this is really important. If you've forgotten everything I've said before, that's fine, but pay attention now. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with Him. Draw your strength from Him, that strength which his boundless might, might provides, puts on God's whole armor. The armor of a soldier that God supplies 
to stand up against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. So to begin with, Tracy, I want to start with you because you found out some awesome information concerning why Paul used the belt of truth. Yes. You know, it's amazing how we find every time Paul speaks, he obviously gives us a point of reference yeah. and why he would use a Roman soldier of all people and the armor from the Romans. Yes. I think it's probably the wisest thing that we could actually gain from that because we get a good picture in our mind of it. Come on, Trace, give us a picture of the belt of truth. The belt of truth for me when I discovered it is just the most beautiful piece part of the armor. On top of just its sheer size, it was decorated with most beautiful attachments, all these different buckles and little belts and all these, these beautiful straps that just totally engulfed this beautiful belt. Now, when we studied it, I discovered two very important things about this. And you're going to get excited. You're going to get excited. It, it's just outstanding. <laughs> The first thing that I noticed is the Roman soldiers, you can imagine their armor, right? Mm -hmm. Now, as they're walking, this belt has got all of these little jingly, jingly things on it. So it makes a noise. Right. So it made like a little jingle noise. So they had jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> they had like the bling. Blue. They had the bling. They had bling. But it was actually really significant because even before the soldier walked into the room, you, you could hear him. the That's soldier good. coming. That's good. Because of the sound that the soldier was carrying. Very good. So how does this apply to us? The belt of truth gives us a distinctive sound. <laughs> a distinctive sound. When you are wearing the belt of truth, you sound different. Wow. The people around you, when you speak, they will notice you sound different. Yeah. Even before, I love this, even before you get into the room, <laughs> While you're walking into the room, they will know something's coming, mm, someone's brilliant. coming. Brilliant. So it was a very distinctive sound. So that's the first thing I noticed about the belt. The second thing I noticed about it, it was very heavy. Right. Now, we think of belts as being thin and just a, you know, just a, a, little, a little strappy thing. A thing this, to keep our pants up. Yeah. Well, yes. <laughs> and um, it did keep the sword up, which is really important, but it was exceptionally heavy heavy right so the the significance of this is with the belt being heavy it forced the soldier to change the way he stood wow the posture the posture completely changed awesome. so where he might be like this putting the belt on what happens ladies we know it straightened you up right it forced the rounded shoulders to come up now this immediately makes me think of women who experience something that we know as depression mm -hmm. When you're wearing the belt of truth, oh wow! Okay, it doesn't matter. It. Yes, what weight you are carrying. Very good. It makes no Very difference. Very good. Very good. It makes no difference. Yes. Uh, Titi, it looks like you're bursting. Have you got something that you want to just throw in there? Yeah. She she mentioned something about the sound, and what came to mind is what Jesus said about uh, the move of the spirit. Yes. It talked in John chapter three, from verse three. He said. It's, do not marvel that I say unto you, you must be born again. Mm -hmm. And it says this, it says the spirit moves wherever it wants to go. Good. You, you will hear the sound, but you cannot tell where it's coming from, oh, nor where it's this going. Is good. So is everyone born of the spirit. Woo! That, that really told me something. That is that, awesome. That's right. Tell that's something. right, because we are not led by our own emotions. Mm. We're not led by our mm. circumstances. Mm. We are led by the sound of the spirit. That's right. So that sound that everybody hears is actually the spirit of God yes. in us. If we can just have that truth to pull us up, that's right. then you're not going to hear the sound of the negativity. That's anymore. right. Okay, all right, now this is getting very exciting. <laughs> okay, so there is so much to fit in. But Rayana, I want you to speak a little bit more because you have, you also had a picture of the belt of truth. Apparently, to the soldier was the most insignificant piece of armor. Okay. Um, it was not the thing that they would take home and celebrate, like, yay, I got my belt of truth. Right. It was seemingly insignificant, but the truth is about the belt of truth is that it was probably the most important part yes. because it held all the other parts together. That's good. So That's the, good. the clip 
for the, the shield was on the belt. The clip for the sword was on the belt. So without the belt, there is no shield of faith. There is no sword of the word. Right. And so the belt held it all together. Yes. But I love what Tracy says about it holding you yeah. upright. Mm. Because yes, there are two, there are two kinds of truths that, that are being revealed here. The first is the internal truth. Mm. That's My good. integrity my uprightness it's his truth that keeps me in truth That's because good. he upholds us in our integrity yes. is what the word says yes but there's an external truth and so when we put on that belt we are putting putting on this truth yes. of the word yes. and we know that the truth is not the bible says that jesus is the way the truth but he's not just the truth he is truth. truth. Oh, that's good. I like he that one. He is truth. Yeah. So we are putting on Jesus. Yes. We are putting on Jesus when we buckle up that belt. And everything we need to conquer in this battlefield is attached to this belt. So the belt seems insignificant, but it's very, very important. Absolutely. And Jesus is yes. truth. Yes. Now, Titi. I think you need to jump in here right now because do you remember where the opposite of truth is deception? Oh, yes. Uh, you know what? That's something ladies need to know about because uh, our mother, Eve, the first woman in Genesis, was deceived because she did not know the truth. Mm -hmm. And Satan is a deceiver. He twists the word of God or adds something to it. In Genesis chapter 3, Satan had a conversation with the, with, 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 with the woman in the garden. And if, as a woman, if you don't spend time with the word of God, yeah. Satan will, took advantage, will take yeah. advantage of that That's and good. mess you up. Do you good. know what? Satan asked Eve, did God really say you should not eat of every tree? Mm -hmm. God did not say that. God said you should eat of the tree, or, but the tree of the the tree in the in the middle of the garden, the tree of the knowledge of ev of That's evil good and evil. good, yes. you should not eat of it. That's then right. Satan said you should not eat of it, but then Eve said God said we should not touch it. How can you keep a thing if you can't touch it? Mm -hmm. Because she did not have the understanding of the truth. So it's important for us as women of God to have the understanding of the truth yeah. of God's yeah. word. If yeah. not, you will be deceived by the enemy. Yeah. Satan good, is good. a liar. Yeah. He's the accuser of the brethren mm. and is determined to hamper any work of God mm. in any yeah. believer's life. That's good. So yeah. that's why as women of God, we've got to abide in the truth. Mm. We've got to yeah. stay in the word. If you don't stay in the word, you will not know the truth yeah. because the truth is only revealed when you know the word of God. Yeah. So it's important for us. And then uh, the other part of it is that, you know, women, we tend to you know, listen to all sorts of things. And, That's good. and because we are very mm -hmm. emotional, mm -hmm. we allow our emotion to take the very part of us instead of allowing the word of God, the truth that you mentioned about, the truth that you mentioned yeah. about. We've got to allow the word of God stay within us. We've got to abide in the word. So when the enemy comes, you just know because yeah. he always drops everything. When God spoke to Jesus, spoke about Jesus at the time of baptism, God said, this is my beloved son yes. in whom I am well pleased. Yes. When Satan came to Jesus, he dropped the word beloved. Yes. He says, if you are the son of God. Mm -hmm. So he, either he will drop the word, he will twist the word. So you have to be very smart and be, and be courageous and let the truth of God's word enter into your being. Yeah. Thank wow. you, Sister Jenny. Wow. Thank Whoa. you. I love it. 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 You know, he even uses the word. And that's, yeah. like you said, even when he tempted Jesus, yeah. he still came with the word. That's right. So we need to understand that when we have the word of God, it cannot just be a mechanical yeah. word. <laughs> it's, it doesn't help to just memorize scripture because yeah. the devil knows it already. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, and yes. he uses scripture on us mm -hmm. yeah. just to deceive and twist. Yeah. But yes. there's a deeper knowing of the word. Yes. And Linda, this is where I want you to, because listen, listen, this is very, very important. <laughs> this is what makes me so excited. You can always tell the difference between someone who knows the word and someone who knows 
the person of the word. Yes. Linda, come on, come on. I want to pick up where you left off with the deception. Um, God gave me a dream and I'm so excited about how he's going to reveal the truth of the armor in these sessions. But I had a dream where I walked into a room and Jesus was sitting on the other side of the table and the armor was lying on the table, but it was covered in dust. And he said to me, I'm going to teach you the truth. It's time to dust off the armor. So the truth is, if you, if you look at the whole dream, he said to me that every piece represents him. Hmm. Jesus is the truth of the word. The That's word right. says in John 8 verse 33, and you will know the truth regarding salvation and the truth will set you free from the penalty of sin. Yes. And in John 14 verse 6, it says, Jesus said to him, I am the only way to God and the real truth and the real life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Exactly. So what it says there is that Jesus Christ is the truth. So when you put on the belt, you put on Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. So as you receive revelation knowledge on this who is Christ is, That's mm -hmm. revelation knowledge, not mm -hmm. just knowledge about knowing, but that revelation. When something becomes revelation, it becomes part of your spirit. It becomes part of who you are. So at that moment when, when truth, Christ becomes revelation, the belt of truth comes mm. on. And God showed me in the spirit, it infused into I you. I love that. When it mm -hmm. becomes revelation knowledge, mm. not just knowledge, revelation knowledge, it's infused onto you and it cannot be taken off again. Hallelujah. But if you just go on the thing of, yeah, the word is truth, Christ is truth, and it's not revelation knowledge, Satan can come and he can attack you there and that piece of armor is not infused. It's Absolutely. not on you, it's not a part of you. What I want to also bring emphasis again is how, first of all, Tracy, you spoke about how important it is to even when you wake up in the morning and it doesn't matter how you are feeling mm. in your emotions mm. and, and there's no shame in feeling discouraged because even Jesus did, remember? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I don't ever want anybody to kind of pretend that they don't ever feel that way. Yeah. We, we do, yeah. we do, okay, yeah. all of us do, yeah. but you put on that belt of truth, which yes. makes you stand up yes. strong, yes. right? Yes. We, we yes. did that. Yes. Because the enemy, TT, which you brought across yes. as well, the enemy is going to deceive you. Yes. He's going to lie to you. He's yes. going to twist yes. everything. Yes. And that is just going to put that weight on your shoulder, yes. right? Yes. But then we learn about how Jesus is the truth. Yes. And you telling us yes. that to know the truth is not a mechanical relationship. Yes. What is it? It's actually having a revelational knowledge of who Jesus is. Now, I want us to just get into that a little bit more. May I say something about that? Please. You know, what the enemy does is that he wants us to walk in sense knowledge, not revelation Come on, that's knowledge. good. That's good. So where we begin to walk by how I feel, mm. not what God's mm. word says yeah. about this situation. Yes. Because the word of God says, when Eve saw, she used her physical mm. eyes. She did, you right. She saw the fruit mm. as something mm. to be eaten, something that one can desire to make one wise. But God wanted them to walk in revelation mm. yeah. knowledge. When we mm. walk in revelation mm. knowledge, it puts us on mm. top. Mm. We no longer walk by our feelings because the word of yes. God says they just shall live mm. by faith. Yes. Eh? We walk not by sight, we walk by faith mm. and not by, by sight. sight. Yes. So what, they, what, what happened in the Garden of Eden was the fact that Adam and Eve left the revelation mm. knowledge yes. and they began yes. to walk by sense. Yeah knowledge. Yeah. And that's what God doesn't want us to do. Because Satan we always, even when we look at the temptation, he said to Jesus, you know you are hungry now. Jesus felt that he was hungry. He was. He was. The, 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 we ladies, we know that when we feel like eating that little chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you know that. <laughs> we go and hide. We don't want anybody to know. <laughs> something then you come on the table you <laughs> pretend as if you have not eaten anything <laughs> yeah? Yeah. so sex 
sense knowledge. Sense yeah. knowledge. When you when you allow your senses, to, as you rightly said, your emotions. If you yes. let it rule you, mm. the word of yeah. God will not take mm. effect. Yes. That's good. Thank yeah. you very much yeah. for what that you is said. awesome. I think yeah. if I can add on to that, because it's so important to have the revelation knowledge, That's right? right? But what happens if you are in a state of not being able to receive that revelation knowledge? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, if you're in that position in your where life, you're already overwhelmed. We are so overwhelmed mm. where you feel like the waves are constantly crashing mm. over you mm. and you can barely breathe because of like, uh. trying to get your breath. So you need the revelation knowledge, but if, you, if you're not in that space to get it, mm. right. that is when it has to be a choice. Mm. Mm. Sure. You have to choose the fact mm. that I know whose I am and yes, who's right. I, who I belong to. Yes, right. Very good. Now, so, something I didn't mention about the belt, Jen and everyone else, it's really cool, is that the, the, the belt, when the soldiers wore it, it, it was a status symbol for them to, to, di to distinguish who or which rank they were in the army, right. which army they belonged to. Very mm. good. So mm. if they were wearing identity. this, That's it was their identity. identity. Wow. So when they were wearing this, it didn't matter if they felt like vic mm. vic victory, victorious yeah. or if mm. they felt like champions. That's good. Mm. The very fact that they were wearing it made them a champion. Mm. Very wow. good. Made them victorious. Wow. So when the enemy comes with the lies mm -hmm. and says, you are a failure or you are not this or you are that, you just have to refer to the truth. Yeah, that's right. That's it. it was like telling the Roman soldier, you don't belong in the battlefield, get off the field. And he's like, do you know who I am? That's right. right. Yeah. He didn't yeah. even have to say anything. He's like, seriously, can you not see uh, who I belong to? Wow. <laughs> love it. Whose armor, whose love army it. Love it, love I belong it, love to. It. So when the enemy comes and says, blah, mm. blah, 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 mm. you literally have to go, to the word yes. that's right it is written get mm. behind me mm. we have to speak that truth mm. because we're speaking about the higher life yes. and you know what you were saying about sense knowledge and revelation mm. knowledge you know God is saying our ways are not his ways mm. our thoughts are not his thoughts mm. but that's not condescending mm. that's yeah. God saying to us that's hey yeah. I'm up here yeah. come up to my that's ways right. of doing things that's come up right. to my way of thinking that's come right. up to the truth of yes. who you really yeah. really yeah. are that's the higher life it's a supernatural yeah. life exactly. where we live above yeah. what's happening in the natural yeah. and it's brew it's it's birthed by this truth exactly and isn't that what he said we are seated where in, oh, in yeah. heavenly yeah. places yeah. in Christ Jesus yeah. 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 again comes back to you Linda yeah. back to the revelation of who you are yeah. and who you belong to that is your identity and now our time is coming to an end and there's so much more to say so it's time now to go and give our studio audience a time to give us their questions and I know those of you who are watching you go to have some questions too so Thank you so much for this. I'm so excited. Let's go find out exactly what our studio audience has to say about this discussion. Well, we've just come out of gaining a wealth of knowledge and wisdom and truth from the Word of God concerning the belt of truth. We have a studio audience here with us that have questions concerning what we've just been taught. And I know that you at home have questions too. So if we don't answer those questions now that you might have on, about the belt, you can email us and let us know what they are. It's highlife at myfaithtv.com. The address is right on your screen. Make sure you get those questions to us and we will do our very best to answer them so you can be enriched about this awesome belt of truth. Now, audience, who of you have a question that you'd like to know? Please, let's stand. My question is, how do you stay connected to the belt of truth without losing focus? Now, Linda, I'm sure you have some insight onto this. What would your answer be to that question? Well, I would say if you take it back to the word once again, John 15, where it speaks about the vine and the branches. The vine, the, the branches is part of the vine. The moment the branch is cut from the vine, it will stop bearing fruit. So the moment you are disconnected to the vine, which is Christ, His Word, which is God, the source of life, you will start seeing in your life that you are maybe getting angrier quickly or more irritated, or you will, you will realize then that I have stepped away, that I've removed myself from the vine, because the gift of the Spirit won't then flow easily. 
it's so true. When the fruit of the Spirit is not evident anymore mm. in the way we act and speak, suddenly we realize there's a problem with our connection. There's a distance, a disconnect. Thank you for that. Studio audience, come on. Anybody else got a question? Please stand. This belt sounds very valuable. Would a soldier ever consider selling that belt? Ha! Huh. Tracy, you spoke to us about how valuable this belt is. What is your answer to that? In the day when the, when the Roman soldiers were feeling financially under pressure, or they maybe were, were needing to um, sell, you know, buy a new home or whatever it may have been, they would actually sell their belt. Mm. Because of the value of it, they would sell it in order to be able to pay for what they needed to pay for. Now, how does this apply to us in today in, in, to, as Christians? We have the opportunity every day to sell our identity. Mm. Every day the enemy comes and just, you know, tempts us. Do you really want to be in full-time ministry? Is this really for you? Mm. Why don't you go look for a normal job? I've been told before, Tracy, when are you going to go get a normal job? Mm. And it's tempted me many times. And the Lord said to me a few years ago, are you willing to sell your calling? Yeah, sure. <laughs> in other words, are you willing to sell your identity? Are you willing to sell the truth? So that's an excellent question. Thank you. Yes, we actually can sell it. But by selling it, we are choosing to walk away from the purposes and the call that God has got on our life. A very dangerous step, I might add. If you actually do that, you're stepping into danger ground because you're sure. walking away. You're choosing to turn your back on the call of God. That's an excellent answer, Tracy. Thank you so much. It reminds me of Proverbs 23, 23. It says, buy the truth, but do not sell it. And remember, God says in His Word, He does not take pleasure in us when we step away from the truth of our identity in Him. Brilliant. Thank you so much. We know that there's questions that you must have. Just email us at highlife at myfaithtv.com and we'll make sure we get answers to those questions concerning the belt of truth. That brings us to the conclusion of our first part of the belt of truth, the most vital part of our armor of God, our spiritual armor that helps us overcome in this life. I would like to thank my panel for being such a brilliant panel. What a blessing. Thank you for the wisdom that has flown out from you and of course our studio audience. <laughs> what an enthusiastic awesome audience and to those viewers those of you who have watched and been a part of this program with us thank you so much for tuning in i know that you have been blessed as much as we have now do not miss the next part of the belt of truth and the armor of god with the higher life series you are going to be blessed goodbye and god bless you But once again, getting back to that training in the Word of God, where you know, you know, you know the truth. I just love the Word. You know the truth. Let me tell you, you are not going to want to have anything to do with unholiness. Downtrodden, beaten in life, you know, taking the knocks of the world. You know, you juggle a thousand balls at once. You feel like, I just can't do this anymore. Ooh, wherever I flip, I flip. Oh! <laughs>